Welcome to the Songwriter Theory Podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Vidala, and we're going to talk about music theory, lyric writing, creative productivity, inspiration, and more. I'm super excited to have you here, so let's dive into the episode. Hey friend, today we are going to talk about how you and I and everyone who is a songwriter should be a multi-threaded songwriter. So what does multi-threaded mean? Multi-threaded is the idea that you are not working on only one thing, right? So multi-threaded is, um, I'm a software developer by day, so it's mostly from, from there where if you have a really large task, for example, let's say you have this huge calculation that just takes hundreds of thousands of computer hours to calculate it. What you can do is you can take each individual part and send it to a different computer to run that. Um, there's other ways to sort of explain what multi-threaded is, but... The idea is you should be working on more than one song at a time. If you're only dedicating your entire thought space to one song, I'm encouraging you to not do that. Have a list of songs you're working on. Have a, it doesn't really matter how long it is. Just have more than one. And we're going to go through three major reasons why. And the first one is that you have more options for what to work on. So let's say right now you are going through a breakup and you're writing a song about that because dang it, you're a songwriter. And if somebody's going to break your heart, something might as well come of it. Am I right? Good. Can I hear an amen? Um, so, you might come home today and be feeling kind of sad and really be able to dial into that feeling um, to write this song, to work on this song. But tomorrow, you might have a really great day at work and... You might see your family and you're just like, oh man, my family is awesome. Or you see some friends or your friend gives you a call. um, If people call each other anymore and you just have a great day and you're in a great mood. You might just not really be able to dial in to that side of you that you need to work on this song. So that day you just might not be feeling the feelings you need to really do this song you're working on justice. Similarly, even even within a day, say you have three hours to work on songwriting and you're just writing like mad and you get one hour in and it's going great. You wrote two verses, you didn't have a melody really before, now you do, you think you figured out the chord progression for the chorus and you, the melody's almost there and you're just making huge strides. And then, all of a sudden, you're, like, fried for the day on that song. Well, now, because you're working on more than one song, you can switch to another song. Maybe you're burnt out on the whole my girlfriend broke up with me thing. And you're just not feeling it anymore. So now, now you might be able to transition to that song that you wrote about, that you're writing about. That's about that really annoying boss at work and say because you have an annoying boss you i I don't know you're writing a song that's sort of a quirky funny humorous take on wow i think you're so annoying or something for the record i don't think my boss is annoying this is just an example um so in that case now you might be able to write about that, because now you kind of fried yourself on the whole downer, depressing song, and you know maybe you got a text from your boss that's like, "Hey, can you come in early tomorrow?" 
and stay late for your shift, and you're annoyed. And now you're inspired to write that song. And the more songs you have working on at once, the more you can do this context change, where while you're writing or a certain day, you can work on something different. And this allows you to sort of take advantage of what mood you're in. So instead of saying, well, I'm in a happy mood today, or I'm in in an annoyed mood today, so I can't really write about that breakup song, and that's the song I'm working on, so I guess I'll just watch Netflix. Like, no, you don't have to do that now. Or you don't have an excuse to do that, depending. Um, Because you have multiple different songs, and no matter what mood you're in, there's probably going to be one or two or even more of those songs that you could that you could work on, that your, that your current emotive state sort of allows you to, to do justice. And the second reason, so the first reason was more options of what to work on and allows that context change. The second reason is you're less likely to be stuck and you're going to increase your throughput. So what is throughput? It's basically the amount that a system produces, right? So if you have a, if you have a McDonald's, right? And let's just say they only serve cheeseburgers. That's it. Um, you might have a certain throughput of cheeseburgers, which is the amount that the chefs back there, or whatever you want to call them, the cooks can cook and send out the door. So one McDonald's, because they have really great workers, might be able to have a throughput of a thousand burgers every 10 minutes. But another one might only be able to have a throughput of 500. Or a really prolific musical artist, for example, might have a throughput of, wow, they come out with an album every year. And another one comes out with an album every five years, or some of those really painful ones every 10 years. Or if you're a fan of the BBC show Sherlock, you know an awful lot about throughput because their throughput is three episode seasons once every 30 years. It's not really 30 years, it's like three, but you get my point. So that's throughput. So if you're working on a bunch of different songs, you're less likely to be stuck on any one song because... As I mentioned with the previous point, no matter what mood you're in, because you have multiple different songs, you have different tones, different keys you're writing in, different different riffs that you're working off of. You have all these different things. And depending on the day and the mood, or just there's so many options that you can just be like, ah, let's work on this song today. So maybe you would have been stuck if the only song you were writing was this really sad song about somebody breaking up with you, but you're not going to be stuck because you're in a certain mood, and guess what? Now you can work on that song today. Instead of working on no songs, you have two or three songs that you can work on based on your current mood, based on your current feelings, based on how your mind is ticking right now. And naturally, over time, that's going to lead to increased... Throughput, you're going you're gonna to produce more songs because if, if before your week was three days of being sad, two days of being really annoyed, and uh, what's that leave us? Two days, and two days of just being sort of thoughtful about the meaning of life. Before, you were going to get maybe three days of good work in on your one song that you're doing. But now you get three days on that one song and you get two other days to write about that song about your annoying coworker or your annoying whatever. And then two more days to talk about, you know, whatever that song is that's sort of thinking about life. Maybe it's about the circle of life or something or or you're reflecting back on when your your grandparent passed or whatever it might be. So now you have seven days of productivity still. It's just not all on one thing. But it wouldn't have been before anyway because you, wouldn't get, you would have had three good days of work on that one song. And then the other days you either would have done bad work on the song or you wouldn't really make that much progress compared to the progress you made on the songs that were matching your current tone. 
So you're going to increase the amount of songs that you produce, which as a songwriter, I hope is one of your two goals. Because really, as a songwriter, you got two things, right? Quantity and quality. And we want to have both quantity and quality as high as we can. Um, if you get great quality, but you write one song a year, it's only going to go so far, right? Because if you had a record deal, for instance, that would put you at a 10-song album every 10 years. And uh, something tells me the record company is not going to be too happy with that. And uh, same with your fans, who probably want more than a single every year. Um, so, number two, less likely to be stuck and in increased throughput. And number three, you are going to be less bothered by failures and by slow developing songs. This one is important because sometimes you're going to work on a song. You might even finish a song, get to the end to be like, well, this is crap. Or you might be like, ah, it's pretty good. It's just not me. You know, maybe I don't have the vocal style to pull it off. Or maybe it just doesn't match with who I am. And I wrote it and here it is, but I just... I don't know. It's not for me. I just don't even like it. I don't even like it enough to put forth the effort of practicing performing it or to put forth the effort of recording it. And I just, I already don't care about the song. I finished it and I already don't care about it. And really, that's the honeymoon period, right? Usually when you finish a song, that's when you're most in love with it. Every song, you know, you know, it's every, every band, right? When they come out with a new album, they always say it's the be their best album. And they usually seem to actually believe it. Now, lots of times we look at it and we're like, are you serious, man? This is easily your worst work. Like, quit now. Like, you're done. Or, or you know, maybe we're not that mean. But, but you know, we, we see it for what it is usually. But the artist is like, oh, it's the best thing we've done yet. And they say that one album in and 30 albums in and they believe it every time. Because you're most in love with what you just wrote, usually. So if you already hate what you wrote and you just finished it, are you really going to go through with the effort of recording it or ever performing it or really letting it see the light of day at all? You might even forget how to play it if you didn't record it at all. And three years later, be like, oh, yeah, I wrote that song, but it's junk and I don't remember how to play it. I don't remember it. Which, by the way, record everything you do, even if it's pulling out your phone and just getting a real hit and record on whatever the sound recorder is, just just to make sure you record all your different musical ideas or songs that you finish. Do at least that so that you don't have this this issue of possibly literally forgetting your song or forgetting how to play it. Um, so so you're gonna be less bothered by that, and you're gonna be less bothered by slow developing songs. This is important. Because some songs are going to be magical and they just come to you overnight and you write a song start to finish in 30 minutes and it's great and you love it and you're convinced that it's the best song you've ever written and it's great and everything is wonderful and you think to yourself, man, if I could write at this rate, I could write 365 great songs a year with only a half an hour a day. How awesome is that? But they're not all going to work like that, right? If you've been songwriting for any amount of time, you know what I'm about to say is, is, is I'm sure true for you, as it is for me, where you have a couple of those songs, a bunch of songs that take you weeks, months maybe, and then you have songs that might even take you years, where you have a chorus that you really love and you know that it's got to be the chorus. But you just can't figure out the verses. All the different things you come up with just don't do the chorus justice. Or you just can't figure out the lyric for some reason. Or you have this great bridge and chorus, but you just don't know what the verses need to say. Or you have these great verses and you don't know what the theme of the song is and you can't figure out a chorus. Or you have a chorus and verses, but you like the verses more than you like the chorus, and you're like, ah, that seems wrong, I need to make a better chorus. There's just so many scenarios where sometimes you have a song that you just, just can't finish for years, and sometimes you finally get it later. Like, one great example um, is the first song that 
I released this past year. Or actually, it was a little over a year ago. And I wrote this chorus, and I had this concept for the song. It's called Love You the Same. And the chorus just says... Um, I won't save my love for a sunny day. I don't care. The rain can stay. I will love you the same. And so the theme's there, right? The idea is that, you know, through it all, the good times, the bad times, I will choose to love you the same way. I'm not going to stop loving you just because it's less convenient or anything. So I had that, and I, I really liked it. It was simple, and usually, if anything, I probably have the problem of going a little too symbolic or a little too... It was simple and yet profound to me, and I liked it. But I just couldn't figure out a verse for years. I mean, I literally wrote this chorus when I was a senior in high school, I believe, and I'm 25 years old now. And depending on when I put this out, I might even be 26, because I will turn 26 on January 4th of 2019. Um, so I had this for a while and I really liked it, but I could not finish writing that song until a couple months before we were, I was going to get married to my wife, which was about a year and eight months ago. I got married to her like a year and three months ago. So when I started working on the song again and finally could put it together, it was about a year and eight, seven, six maybe months ago. So if you do the math, it's well over five years. <laughs> like, and, and again, this, this is the minority, right? For, for every one of those songs, there's a lot that are a lot quicker than that. But sometimes it just, you just can't finish it. And it wasn't until thinking about marrying my wife that I could figure out the rest of the song. And the song ended up being a song that's basically me saying to her on our wedding day this. And, and the moral of the song sort of becomes, yeah, it's nice that we have this wedding, but the only love that matters is a love that lasts forever. And when we're in the grave, will they still say that was love? And that, that was the song. I finally had the song. I finally had the story that needed to go with the song. Over five years later, like eight years later, just tons of time later. And sometimes that's gonna happen. Most of the time it'll be a lot shorter than that. Sometimes you'll have the half hour. Sometimes you'll have a couple weeks. A lot of them will be in the like weeks to months range. Um, but if that was the one song I was working on, how frustrating would that be, right? Because I'd either have that song done a while ago, but it just wouldn't have been quite right. Or I just never would have finished it, or I would have given up on something. Like, who knows what would happen? But the more songs you work on at the same time, you can, you can be patient about these things. So instead of being like, this is the song I'm working on, I just need to finish it. Instead, you're letting the song sort of take over in that if this, if you just don't have it in you to finish the song right now, for whatever reason, you don't have the life experiences or you don't, you're just not in the right mindset, whatever it is, you don't have to force it, right? Because you have 20 other songs you're working on. You have 40 other songs you're working on. So who cares if you started writing this song two years ago and you've written, you've started and finished 30 songs since then, or 10 songs since then, or three songs since then, who cares? It doesn't matter, because you always have songs to work on. You're always making progress. You are finishing songs, even if it's not this particular song. So what does it matter? And working on many different songs at once makes it so you don't care so much about this, which is good, because you don't want to force it. You want it to 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 be able to be the song that it was meant to be, be the song that it needs to be, be the song that you want it to be. And being a multi-threaded songwriter will help you do that. So quickly, let's go over the three one last time. First reason why you want to, want to be a multi-threaded songwriter, aka writing many songs at once. More options of what to work on allows a context change. Number two, 
you're less likely to be stuck and you're going to increase your throughput, AKA you're going to increase the amount of songs you produce per unit of time. And three, you're going to be less bothered by the songs you write that are failures that you just don't like. And you're going to be less bothered by slow developing songs. And you're not going to force these songs. You're going to, you're going to, um, allow songs the time they need to develop. So I hope this was really helpful to you. If, uh, if you want to reach out to me, you can tweet at me at Joseph N. Vidala. And I really appreciate you listening. And go and have an awesome day songwriting, friend. Thanks for listening to the Songwriter Theory Podcast. Be sure to subscribe and tell a friend. If you want to jumpstart your songwriting, be sure to download my free guide on 10 proven ways to start writing a song at songwritertheory.com slash free guide. Whether you're brand new to songwriting or a seasoned vet, this guide will help you to avoid staring at a blank page wondering where to start. Even if you just want to figure out some different ways to start writing a song, this free guide is for you.